with that being said, what I want to do now is I want to switch to a zero modified distribution and explain the likelihood estimation for the unknown parameters in such a zero modified uh, distribution. And you know that we encountered this in one of the earlier chapters and that for a zero modified distribution, we would need the probability mass that we put at zero. And we would need one minus the probability mass put at zero multiplied with something we called the truncated probability, which we can then write as like this. We can write it as the PK divided by one minus P zero, right? So this was um, our distribution going over the hurdle of zero. This was a the probability mass of a conditional count distribution, conditional on the outcome taking a value strictly larger than zero, right? So this is what you need to know to, um, to get started. And do remember that this is a valid count distribution because if you put uh, all these probabilities, if you would add them up, you get P0n plus one minus P0n times the sum over k strictly larger than zero of pk divided by one minus p0. So what we get here is p0m plus one minus p0m times one minus p0 divided by one minus p0. So that all the, these probabilities add up to one, right? And they're all positive taking values between zero and one. So we're gonna work with this setting, right? And we want to calibrate this zero modified model to a given sample. So to a given sample where we follow uh, policies over time, let's say, and where we register the number of claims reported on these policies. So the first um, things you could, you could wonder about is what do we need to estimate in this model in terms of unknown parameters, right? But that's, that's the idea indeed. Huh? So for instance, if you would be working here with a Poisson with parameter lambda or a negative binomial with parameters a, r and beta, then you would also have to calibrate these parameters. So the whole idea now is that we think a little bit about how to put the likelihood underneath this model, how to put that together. Yeah? So look at the likelihood. Uh, so what does the likelihood become? Well, I've got the uh, modified probability mass at zero. Um, and I will see the outcome zero and zero times, right? And then I also have the other outcomes going from one to plus infinity, let's say. And for them, I'm going to work again with this modified uh, probability, PK, and I'm going to observe outcome k and k times. Yeah? So this is the same expression as I explained in full detail uh, before the break. But the only difference is that I'm now going to work with these zero modified uh, probabilities. And I do know a few relations. So I do know that if I'm looking at this guy, then I can write the pkm. I can write it as one minus P0m multiplied with PKT. That's one of the connections which I mentioned on the previous uh, sheet and which we also derived in the chapter when we were discussing the zero modification and this zero truncation. Okay, so that being said, what we can do is we can switch to the log likelihood. And what I have then is n0 times the logarithm for the ln of uh, p0m plus then the sum over k of nk times the logarithm of 1 minus p0m plus the logarithm of this truncated probability, the pkt. That would be my likelihood to, or my log likelihood to start with, right? And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put everything that's using the P0M 
on one side and everything that is using the parameters from the AB1 distribution, so from the regular underlying count distribution to the other side. So we can see the log likelihood as N0 times the logarithm of the zero modified probability plus the sum over K of NK times the logarithm this guy, right? And then what comes on top of that is the sum over k of nk times the logarithm of pk minus the logarithm of 1 minus p0. And for this last step, I use the connection that I had also on my previous iPad screen. So the pk t, it's a conditional probability, it's pk, given that my count random variable is taking a value strictly larger than zero. So I need to divide by one minus p0. So if I plug in this expression, you'll get the log likelihood at the bottom. Now, what is the good news about this thing? What do you think? So if you look at the log likelihood and you're interested in estimating P0 on the one hand, and then the parameters A and B of your underlying count distribution on the other hand. So what you see here is that the likelihood is, how do we call that? So if I look at this guy, it's gonna be the log likelihood part that uh, I will denote here with L0. And here I can call this guy L1, let's say is going to split, right? So the likelihood splits in two parts. So if I want to estimate the P0n, I can concentrate on this, on this first part. And if I want to calibrate the parameters A and B from my underlying count distribution, then I can, then I can concentrate on, on this uh, second part of the likelihood, right? So that's very nice. Um, and you can see then on the, on the, on the sheets, how we do that more explicitly. Uh, so let's take a look over there. So here I am. So what is interesting to see here is that you look at, if you look at the three parameters that need to be estimated, you can focus the L0 here, um, the L0 only depends on our parameter P0M, and the part of my likelihood indicated with L1 will be independent of this zero modified probability at zero, and it will only depend on the underlying regular count distribution. So if you look at the likelihood um, L0, and you take the derivative with respect to P0M, you can work that out, I'll let you check that. And what we see here is that we get as the maximum likelihood estimate of the probability mass, the modified probability mass at zero, that will be N zero divided by N. So I'm asking here, yeah, what is the intuition behind that? Well, that's the empirical probability mass put at outcome zero. It's the number of times we see outcome zero in our sample divided by the total number of observations in our sample. Yeah, so that would be our MLE for the modified probability mass at zero. Okay. Of course, you can bring in more structure there. You can bring in covariates. Um, that's, that's not the purpose of, of, it's not my intention to cover that in this course. It's possible. But here, keep the intuition that if we go for a maximum likelihood estimate of the modified probability at zero, we end up with the empirical probability mass of uh, put at zero, right? If we look at our zero modified, uh, if we look at the, the other part of the distribution, and let's say that we want to model that with a Poisson distribution, then we're, we're going to plug in this PK. So you, you recognize here the logarithm of the probability function of a Poisson evaluated in outcome K. And you recognize here the logarithm of uh, one minus observing an outcome zero, no, one minus the probability of getting a zero outcome in a regular Poisson model. So if you work out all the details, you once again get an exam, you get a, an expression that's going to use the lambda and which you can uh, maximize over the unknown lambda. 
right? Because you've got all the ingredients that you need here. You've got N, the number of observations. You've got N0, the number of times you observed outcome zero. You've got the sample mean. Uh, you've, you've got everything that you need to know here. You can plug that in, consider it to be a function of the unknown lambda and optimize over the unknown lambda. And you can do that either numerically or you can try to, to get along with it with the, with the formula work. So here under certain considerations, you can take a look at that yourself. You see that eventually um, we end up with the following expression between the unknown lambda, the sample mean x bar, the uh, p0 yeah, in the uh, original count model, and the p0 hat, the, the, the modified probability at zero, which we are able to calibrate with the MLE that we just derived. So this gives us a little bit of intuition of what uh, eventually the lambda will be like, huh? but you would have to solve this numerically to come up with a value for this, um, for this lambda, okay? So that's also something I'm gonna demonstrate um, next week, but it, it shows us that we can actually calibrate these zero modified models to a given data set. And the likelihood in this case, it splits between a part that is only doing dealing with the modified probability at zero, and then another part that is, um, that is relying on um, the underlying count distribution that we wanna work with, okay? And numerically, you can, you can solve that. So if we go back to our previous example, we'll see here, if you calibrate a zero modified Poisson, if you calibrate a zero modified geometric distribution, you'll get here an expression for the P0M, which we could actually verify. Huh? We could say it should be the number of times we observe the zero divided by the total number of observations in the sample. So you could verify this number. And next to that, you also get, for example, a calibrated value for lambda in the zero modified Poisson. And do notice that this is a different value for lambda than the one you originally obtained if you would just fit the plain Poisson model to the, uh, to the observed outcomes over here, all right? And again, you could come up with what would be the expected number of zeros in the fitted model, what would be the expected number of, of ones, outcomes one that I would see in my model and so on and so forth. In order to make a meaningful decision or to make a meaningful choice among those different models, I'm gonna defer that to the chapter discussing model selection techniques. Uh, I'll see how I cover that. Maybe I'll integrate it in, in the computer lab next week. That's, that's okay, it's not too much to discuss. But for now, we sort of um, just make a bit of a more quali qualitative choice. Huh? So you could compare the observed count distribution with the fitted count distributions and then say, okay, I think uh, this, this model or this model is, is getting closer and is a better fit for me. You could also look at a comparison of the log likelihoods achieved, but there you need to be careful because these different models here use a different number of parameters. Yeah? And of course, the more parameters you're using, the um, better value you could realize for the log likelihood, right? So we need different criteria. We need to put a penalty on top of this log likelihood in order to make a meaningful choice based on the log likelihood derived um, measure. We'll come back 